Chats and only mode. Hi there and welcome. My name is Derek Feldman and I'll be with you for the next 45 minutes or the hour talking about online fundraising. Uh, I'm the CEO of Achieve. We're excited to have you here. So we've got some festival children members, some of our Achieve Access members that were all here. And so we'll have a good, lively discussion for the next 45 minutes to the hour. And of course, if you've attended anything else that we've done, we record the session and we put that into our Achieve Access site, which you all have access to, quote unquote. And uh, we'll also have the presentation and anything else uh, that we would talk about here for you to take a look at. So thanks for spending some time with us. And uh, if, if you have any questions or need any uh, anything throughout the session, please feel free to chat during uh, during the session. And you can put those questions later on into the questions portal, which is on your go-to uh, webinar panel here that you're seeing right now on your screen. And so today's conversation will show a lot of different examples. And I, as, as a visual learner, I can tell you that I'm excited because this is where we get a spotlight, some of the organizations, some of them we've worked with, some of them we haven't, where uh, we can show you some really great specific examples of some online fundraising methods using websites. And so throughout the piece here, we're going to talk about donation forms and platforms. I'll talk about some creative approaches that have been used with some of the pieces that you'll have on your screen. And then uh, we'll actually end with some Q&A that we can get to as well. We'll make sure to get you out a little before the hour, maybe five to 10 minutes, just to hit that next meeting that you gotta go to. And so when we talk about online fundraising, um, what we usually look at, and one of the core things that we do is, is sit down with organizations to try and help them understand what really online fundraising is. Online fundraising is a method and an approach. Uh, it is a method to try and in, excite impulsivity in learning about the organization and also giving. I think the challenge with, that we have seen in online fundraising, and this is just online communication in general, is that over the course of time, we have seen the communication style in the online environment not only become much shorter and quicker, but also I would say more, more colloquial and more humanistic in, in its delivery. And because of that, some organizations have really struggled, I would say, to try and make that transition. So for instance, as an organization, uh, do you just send out press releases and put those on your websites, or do you modify that language in an online environment for somebody that might be viewing it? And so what we've discovered, too, is that not only uh, are donors uh, re looking at online websites of nonprofits from a perspective of saying a short, quick, impulsive knowledge uh, base, but also taking that and in, in modifying and, I would say, replicating what they're doing in the consumer world as well. For instance, you know, the, the rise of use of buttons and messaging and short, quick, instantaneous uh, actions that somebody can take is very common in consumer based websites. And, you know, if you look at Amazon to, to buying products and how they've, you know, even teach you how to shorten the way in which that you message what that product is and what that product does. All of that has changed some of the online behavior that is actually trans going into how donors relate to organizations. The other thing, too, is, and this is sort of the, the hard cycle about online communication, online fundraising, is, is that we continually have to keep it fresh and ongoing. It's sort of the cycle of ongoing content development. And for some of us as organizations, it's really tough because we're not equipped to be in this always producing mode of content and pieces for our website. I remember when some of the first sites I worked on with my organizations is as soon as we produced the site, we felt like, wow, we can really take a break and we can move on to something else. And now there really is no break. We're always in mode to develop a new content, new website looks and feels to test things out. And so when we think about online fundraising, we like to say that there are four primary things online fundraising should do. The first one being making a statement. Our goal is that we have to make a statement in order to grab the attention of the person who is viewing the site. Now, this is kind of contradictory to probably what you've heard in marketing, where we would say, we want somebody to know our mission, our vision, all of these other things about us. 
In reality, how many of you have actually gone to another nonprofit's website? Truthfully, now ask your friends too. And the first thing they gravitated to was a mission statement and read it and completely understood what was going on. We don't do that. What we tend to see is that things like headers or images that have text over them talking about a bold statement is something that we'll remember or recall because we're trying to create a statement and we know that we have limited time. We have limited time from a, from a person that actually goes to your site, reviews the information and says, this is what I want to do. And so from that perspective, our fundraising messages need to make a statement. It needs to be a little bit more bolder. It, you're not going to have paragraphs upon paragraphs of case statement or direct mail copy that we can try and make, make uh, just sort of transform into the online environment. We'll have to make a statement. The other thing is, is that we'll have to tell a story. And now I want to be cautious about this because you probably have heard, and it's a very uh, well-known marketing and public relations tactic to tell stories. However, telling stories from a fundraising perspective, we can do that through images. We can do that through small paragraphs of saying, this is a person that you are helping as well. And so because of that, our role of telling a story all of the time is something that we have to embrace. And I know that we may not have the expertise to always do that, but showing people, and that kind of goes into the second one, showing imagery to spark an emotional connection to something or somebody, usually somebody that you're helping, is so important. And, it, and it's so interesting to see the dynamics of online fundraising come into play in this sort of imagery and storytelling. You should do a little test of showing, uh, just having a paragraph and explaining an individual that you're helping and try and do that in a small paragraph. The other test would be is actually do that same thing with one bold statement of putting text over the image, the face, the image of a person, the face of a person that you're helping. You will find that we're emotionally connected to the image of somebody in suffering and needing our help than we are necessarily to that text that we'll see. And when we're in the online environment, especially when we're in the mobile environment, we tend to pass over text really, really quick. And so the things that really stand out are the images or the breaks and headlines and stuff, which would then make us look at an image and try and create that emotional connection. And then lastly, I would say is that our online fundraising has to help the donor act. So we need cues. We are a society that needs to have cues in order to help us move from one thing. So it's, will you give us money? Will you volunteer? If you do, we need you to start right here. Do this right now. Have this happen. Our fundraising online has to help the donor act. They have to move from passive content reader to active donor. And in order to move to that, we got to give them the cues. We got to create a statement, potentially using a story or a byline that's really short and saying, if you want this same thing, if you want to help this person I'm showing you, I need you to click here and start the giving to give to us. I need you to make this happen by starting the steps. You have to lay out those steps in an online environment. You know, we used to, I always uh, joke about in, in speaking presentations about, you know, it's like when we say to uh, the public, head to our website for more information. That's like saying, go to Walmart if you've never, ever been there before and try and find the paint department. You know, for some of us, it's really tough if we've never been there and don't know what we're looking for. So we need cues. We need cues on pages. We need cues in email. We need cues all of the time. Those cues are sparked through images told because of a story that came about from a statement you made. You can kind of see the relationship between the four. So if anything that you get out of this session, you know and always keep these statements somewhere when you are writing copy or even going through website fundraising copy or email copy is what is the bold statement we want to make? How can we wrap that short, brief story showing an image that shows the person we help to help and cue that donor to act in some way? If you start writing the copy in that manner and you start bringing them through that process, you'll begin to see that that donor is getting that understanding of what you want them to do in that moment. Okay.
So let's go ahead and start moving into some key things that are important with this online fundraising environment. The first one being design. Uh, and this is the challenge I would say for, um, I, I would say for a lot of organizations who struggle with communications is, and, and I've noticed this that somebody will, well, uh, I'll be at a speaking presentation and someone will say, Derek, our communications are just really, really poor. And I'll say, all right, so why don't you show me your communications? And when I start to look at them, I usually find beautifully written pieces. It might be a little bit formal, probably too formal for my liking. But what's actually happening too, and I'll, re I'll, I'll tell this to the person that shows this, is that you actually have a design issue too. It might not be just how you write, it's how you present it. We wrap that into, we have communication problems. We don't send things that look right, or, or we actually send too much and so forth. Well, it's the presence of what it is. And what we like to say is that if we can create a designed element that helps somebody act, then we can use all of that wonderful copy we've written, that communication to help person act to give us money. But we have to present it in a manner to grab the attention. Because the images, the design is typically what spreads. The, the message is spread, that they, people spread messages, but what they're also spreading is the conceptual look and feel of it as well. And you'll get that too. You know, you might be in your Facebook account and one of your friends says, oh my gosh, you got to check out this website. It's awesome. What I always enjoy is when I hear that statement, well, what's awesome about it? What did you like? And when you start asking those questions, we, we usually get down to these things which relate to usability, which is, is that it looks good. It's easy to use. I understood what I needed to do. And therefore, I acted. I participated in that manner. And so from this perspective, what we're really talking about is that usability sense. And there are five key things that go into how somebody uses an online fundraising piece or just online in general. One is, is that does the content and the material satisfy me to a certain extent? Could I, and it's called learnability, could I actually learn something in that short two to three minute, or short two to three sentence piece? The fourth one being where there are errors in it. You know, we, uh, we, we, we will point out the errors far, far more than we will point out the things that you do correctly. That's our society. Uh, the second, the, th the fourth thing is efficiency. Was it quick? And then the last one, what was memorable about the experience? When you combine all of those things in fundraising, we tend to get magic happen, right? So it's, did I, did I learn something quick about the cause or the issue or the people I'm help that I'm helping? Was it a memorable piece? Did I like the design? Was it easy to use? Were there no errors? And at the end, I felt good. I was satisfied with it. And so it's sort of that usability doesn't just exist when I talk about fundraising or just website uh, usage. It actually correlates to how fundraising and organizations are raising money. And then I would say lastly, too, is that we cannot in, in we cannot think that somebody is going to be sitting at their desktop and doing what you're doing right now, which is devoting a, you know, a lot of time right now to listening to this presentation. That's because this is a learning environment. For most of us, our learning environments happen while we're on the go, while we're doing certain things. And so the rate and speed of our knowledge attainment is so much faster in certain environments. And what I always tell organizations is that, are you designing this fundraising page for somebody to spend time with it? Or are you designing it for somebody to understand it quickly and then react to it? And your default should always be the latter because people read so much, so much content and information through mobile websites and through other things. And so it's your goal to try and create pages forms for donate for donors, all of those things with the mindset that these people have less than 30 seconds to probably do this and they're moving on. And you want them to say, to take that 30 seconds and then move into another minute or two and spend time with the content. But, but you have to help them build there and get their attention to do that. All right. So let's do this. Let's start talking about donation pages and then we'll get into some forms of donation forms. 
overall, I would say that one of the core things that we have seen in a lot of donation pages is making it much more simplistic, much easier for all of us to try and understand how I can make gifts and how I can make something happen. Uh, this website, as you see in front of you, does several things. One is is that they use imagery, and one of the core things in fundraising that you have to remember is, is that in fundraising, you raise money to help one person. I know that you might help 1,000 people, but to the donor, I can conceptualize the one person. In my mind, when somebody in an online environment views this donation page, they immediately go to the, the individual in the background right here. And knowing that if I give money, I'm helping that person. I'm helping them be successful in whatever they do. In the three things that you see here, and I really enjoy how they have put in here the ways that you can give, which is take action right now in its model, and then give monthly, which I really appreciate, which you need to ask more for, and then how you can actually support one particular aspect, like providing a scholarship. But I want to stop here and make sure they understand the key pieces of what this organization is doing. First and foremost, they're taking an image of a person. And notice that that image is a close-up photo of them to try and help the person view what's going on and who it is I would help. They took out a lot of the donation language, simplified it into the three simple ways that you can give and the kinds of ways that you can give to as well. They even go further on the same page if you scroll down to talk about how their money is going to be used. And if you'll notice on the right-hand side, what's really appreciative here is that they show the people that are part of the fundraising staff. What they're doing is they're creating that humanistic element, bringing it back into the page because it's, you know, websites are websites and we try to create those people and notice we got great pictures and the people are there to help us. And they've also used design to help them communicate how money will be used specifically. And they've done it in a very simplistic way with, you know, they've used these headlines. We'll use it in media, mobilization, recovery and protection. And what they've done is that on that page, if somebody wants more information, they can try and get it. So key things here that you'll have to understand. One is that take images, help somebody understand the actual person that you're going to be helping. Now, this is where I disagree with others in the field when they'll say, well, this is where you could put a donor statement on them. Say, as a donor, I'm so proud. That on the fundraising pages has not proven successful with some of our clients. I want to warn you. What we have seen more successful is actually talking about in that moment when they're interested in giving, showing them the person they're going to be helping, not a fellow other person that has given, but a person that they're helping. So make sure that that's key in some of your pieces. This is another organization that has really defined what it is that you get from the donor benefit side as well. And so from here, they provide you with clear benefits uh, at each level in sort of their annual fund area. In addition to that, they've also said, here's the person that can help you. We've got a calendar of an event of programs and things that are going on uh, if, you want, if you want to discuss those. The other thing that's interesting, too, is that what we like to do sometimes as organizations is put benefits separately, maybe in a page or two on the bottom, rather than sort of on the top or highlighted it. What I would do is make sure to provide and help people understand what does it mean after I give? What are you going to do? That's essentially what the benefits piece is. And so from that perspective, look at in their, in their uh, sub-navigation, you'll see it's individual donor benefits. Also, you can say stewardship, a donor, what our donors receive. All of those are good things to help the donor that you're not only interested in all just about giving, but you're also interested in about helping them continue the learning process and stewarding them too as well. Uh, this is a, a great example, all the way up from $20 to $1,500 of what somebody can do and what something will help you. And I know this is tough for some of us as organizations who don't have a mission that might be able to make this happen. But if you can, try and start low all the way to high to show value in each donation level. It would be really, really great. Uh, they also do a nice, effective job. If you were to click on those, they actually share stories of people that are doing some things. So that's another way, again, images of that person that you're trying to help to show exactly what you could do 
to try and make sure that the donor understands who they're helping at what level to show that no matter what the gift is, they're really making an impact. The other thing that I would say too about this site that's really important is that they use language like donor results. What's the results of donations? So being very definitive. Now we would like to use words like impact, the impact of what we have. Impact is not necessarily a public word. And so from this perspective, think about how can you use words like results, what your donation does. Break down words that we typically like to use that I'll say are, are more friendly to people like us who know what that means and, and foundations too as well. So those are just some aspects to look at how some uh, pages have come about. Let's actually talk about some donation platforms. So these are platforms that you could use to also raise money. Now, I will say that over the course of the last several years, there has been uh, an increase in the number of technology platforms that are used to raise money. Now, a couple of things when we talk about platforms. The, when we discuss platforms today, what we're talking about are those outside third-party vendors that provide transactions for us. And a lot of these vendors and technology companies have created unique ways for you to garner more donations online. Some of them are successful and some of them are not, but essentially they've wrapped around their services, not just transactions and processing of donations, but different approaches to try and get those donations to as well. So one common one that you might hear about will be something like a Razoo uh, or First Giving or Network for Good, which we'll all talk about in a minute. In Razoo, their focus is, is to create social sharing type of fundraising campaigns. And so what that would mean is that Myself or you, if we were very vested into the organization, we'd say we'd like to raise money, small amount, maybe $1,000, $2,000, to try and help the organization. And from that perspective, we would uh, send it out through Twitter and Facebook and do as much promotion as we can. What Razoo allows is, is for you to use that platform from a social media standpoint and try and spread it. And the nice thing that they do, too, is you'll see on the right-hand side is that they provide different ways that donations can, can really make a difference. So if you don't have the capability to do your own processing of transactions, you could actually have this link to your site. Not ideal, but if you had to go that route, that's an option. The second one that's out there, too, is sort of stay classy. They've done some really great work in this uh, area, too, to help organizations create small campaigns, maybe two, five, ten thousand dollar donations, and then again spread those. They also allow, as you can see in the mobile device, some of the companies have created mobile friendly donation uh, pages too as well. And that might be where you would want people to go to if they're trying to give a donation through a mobile device. You can kind of get them to a mobile site that looks, as you can see right there, very helpful. Uh, there's a there's terms called in the technology field called um, responsive design. That's what mean. That's what that means. It means that that the design of the page responds to the mechanism or the the way in which that they're viewing it. So, if they're viewing it on their desktop, it will look very good for desktops. If they're viewing it on their mobile device, it will look very good there too. The other one is a Network for Good is probably one of the bigger platforms that are used to transact uh, as well. And also to, I would say, to create ways for uh, organizations to modify their donation pages. Probably more of the leader, I would say, and they create a lot of different tools there too. So if you're needing a donation transaction, that would be your place. What they also do is they create a secure web page on there. And you also have the opportunity to design and to a certain extent, to design and put information on that page to try and encourage giving. And when we get to some forums later in this conversation, you'll be able to see some examples. Donately is another one that what they do is that it's really focused on the individual where they can spread stuff. So this might be if you had on your fundraising page, individual, if you wanna raise money for us, you can put that platform on here. Um, you can go over here to Donately start your own campaign and raise money for us uh, as well. Fundly is very similar, except they take it to more of a crowdsourcing uh, piece in that they try to say, we're trying to reach this goal really quick, and they use it more as a crowd fundraising uh, arena where they try to get a lot of donations really quick to hit a bigger goal amount, and anybody and everybody can participate from that standpoint. Very similar to CrowdRise too as well.
So here's a couple of things that you have to realize about the platforms as we discussed and went through some of them uh, in an overview is that you need somebody to transact and do your processing. The second thing is, is that it doesn't hurt to experiment with peer fundraising campaigns in using some of these platforms like a Rezu, a Stay Classy, uh, uh, Donately, and Fundly, of course. Those are all really good campaigns and, and platforms to use because what they do is that they allow you to spread or they allow the actual donor to spread the fundraising message through their social networks much easier than you saying something like, okay, thank you for donating. Here are three to four different posts that you should share through your social networks so that you get others of your family and friends to give to as well. So those are some options that I would consider if you want to go down a peer fundraising uh, side too. Another example would be something like during your special, 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 special,
is, is that they have that bold statement right at the top. Thank you for joining the family of donors. Your gift will do blank right away. And that's the similar messaging that is being used in all other pieces of their fundraising case statements online as well. Now, the nice thing that they do is that they have built in on the right-hand side a way to promo maybe a certain type of gift. So, and we've done this with some organizations successfully too. If you were to build out or if you're going to do a website, I always like to have something on the right-hand side uh, there that's more of a promo that you can change out whenever you want. So, for instance, you always have your common donation form that's right here on the page. On that right-hand side, you could do things like, you know, if you have a special event, make sure you buy your tickets today. Do you have a special need right now? You know, right now, we really need X, Y, Z to make this happen. Here's And so you're almost running your own fundraising ad within the donation page. Consider that when you're designing your next websites. The other thing that they do, too, in the bottom right is that they continue the membership and the view the benefits uh, levels, too, as well. So if somebody does have a question about some of those benefits, they can continue. So a couple key things to consider. One is they've simplified and they've really shortened the types of things that you have there in accepting payments. The right-hand side is the, is a way that you can do a fundraising ad, uh, a way in which that you want to promote a certain gift gifting opportunity. And then on the bottom right, it talks about the different levels as well. I'm going to go back to the 4-H example. And as, as sorry, it's a little fuzzy on the screen there, but what you'll see here on the 4-H one is that the right-hand side talks about the ways to make your, your gifts can make a difference. This is a campaign page that we created for them. And so these are this, this is the same imagery that's also used in that campaign uh, too as well, including on the bottom, bottom right-hand side, 6 million 4-H youth making connections uh, too. This is another organization that I really enjoy their forms, and we see uh, a lot of great things that are going on right now. This is a, uh, a form that's used for peer fundraising primarily, too, that you'll see there, too, that the donation can be credited to somebody's fundraising page. So, you know, if, if, if somebody was raising money on your behalf or, or and they, you wanted to give them credit, that's a way to do that. It's a creative way. You could list their name in there. could also be an honor or a tribute. Those are different options. And what they've done is, is that they've asked them to create that, uh, uh, too, as well. You might be able to, and we're experimenting with this right now, so you'll have to get back with me on this. But another interesting thing you might want to do is if you had a unique question that you wanted to ask them there as a pull down, uh, you might be able to do that too and get away with it. So for instance, uh, as a donor, I care more about, and then that would give you interest information about that individual, which is always, always so helpful. What I like, too, as you'll see here, is they've got the different in, you know, just a simple block of of what the numbers are one time monthly, too, as well. Questions on the right-hand side, which is always good if they have more information or need that. This is a membership form. These are different ways that perks and things happen. Uh, and in this membership form, you can click on the different levels and pieces that you get and then from there, you would actually start to, to log in and get your membership. Amnesty International is one of my favorites, too. Two-column approach, which is very nice. And they simplified it there by also making sure that they would like to receive information. On your donation forms, make sure that you have a, would you like to receive communication with us? A lot of us forget that and just assume all donors want it. And so don't do that. Don't get in the habit of making somebody who is a donor not like you uh, through all the email communications that you might be getting. This is another donation form where, in this case, they were looking at doing uh, a couple things. This is a younger generation piece. And on the left-hand side, they had some you know, information that if they wanted to fill out, they could, including their Twitter handle, Facebook account, so they could get recognition on Facebook and in Twitter which is a kind of interesting piece. This is a client of ours that we worked with. And so, and also to sign up or, you know, to opt out of the newsletter, those are all options there too. So, so in all of this, what I think the biggest things that you'll need to understand is that we've got forms. We still have to 
sell them on why they need to give a gift to us, that case statement, that bold statement that we were talking about earlier, it helps to create an image if you can. We really like the buttons that show the different levels and also, as you'll see on your screen right now, the ways that those levels, those, those gift amounts will actually make a difference. And then lastly, as you look in all of this, that you wanna try and create the forms in a more uh, broader sense of saying, let's do two columns and different aspects uh, there too as well. So in the form uh, capabilities here, also make sure that as you're going through what donation form development, consider that right-hand side here. Consider what it is you want to push. Create a visual ad, a visual piece that could also relate to the campaign. So if you have like your end of year campaign, you could create that ad right in that right-hand corner uh, too as well. Okay. And then this is the last one uh, that I have here. Uh, and this is the St. Jude. They do a nice job too. They, what I like about this one is in a very simple way, they've done that. This is my monthly and then dedicate my donation right there, which is a very nice piece, uh, to, to some, you know, to some people that I would say are not used to trying to ask for monthly donations or how to do that. That's a, that's a really great piece. And then the dedication and tributes too as well. So let's take you through what we've done so far. We've talked about how pages and content and language needs to change. We've talked a little bit about how that relates to the design and the features of people. Uh, when we're asking for money, we ask and we show images of people. We make that bold statement and we bring it all the way down. And the second thing is, is that we've been talking about forms, how to make those forms really good. And if you needed to use other platforms to make that transaction processing happen uh, as well. So now we're going to uh, finish here with some of the creative approaches that we also wanted to just talk to you about that you might want to consider. The first one being around video. Uh, video uh, can be a persuasive giving mechanism for some organizations that can do video really well. Now, um, you know, one of the best examples, obviously, is you always hear about a charity water, which I have on the screen. But we have seen some really impactful video where you'll show 10 to 30 minute, 30 second, not minute, trust me, don't do minute, 30 second uh, spots that talk about and show the faces and the individuals that, that you are helping. Notice I said the faces of the individuals, not necessarily that you're just video recording the special event you had and there's people in the background that just happen to be at the activity. That stuff isn't what the video should be used for. We need to start using video in that sense in a more creative way to say, how can I, in a, in a really a video motion way, create and show stills and images to people to, to help them understand the case and the need for our support? The other thing that we should also think about in using video in an online mechanism is the different types of ways to, to use it in stewardship and updates. One of the best things that you could do is even do a minute from your executive director uh, talking about how uh, you as an organization are working and how the, you know, this quarter is going, these video vignettes and updates. Immediately, we always go to the blog as an option and really we don't have to. And this is something that you can incorporate on that individual benefits page that we talked about earlier. I have always found, and when I was doing fundraising, is that my executive didn't love to write, and so it ended up being somebody else, but he was such an effective communicator uh, in person and on video. And so we started using video as a mechanism to share his updates, because quite honestly, the blog that he was supposed to write that we wanted him to never really took off, and he was so much better at communicating uh, by being seen and that visual element. A great piece to do. The other thing that I have always found too is that in using videos and to your donor communications is that create a page on your site in your individual benefits that says this is the quarterly update. Here's the two or three videos. And we've done different things where we'll say, you know, one video is of the executive for a minute talking about what's going on. Another one might be a core volunteer, somebody from the program staff, and maybe somebody else that they're helping short pieces, they don't even need to be as edited, just very short, you know, pieces that you can put on YouTube or even on your on your website there. So use video to reinforce the what you're seeing on that page from the benefit side to also what the impact of the organization is. And then I would also say as you're thinking about video, 
um, it's always helpful that we have found is sometimes using uh, using a page or creating a page on your website that you can share with donors, major donors, maybe even foundations and corporations in advance of your meetings. A good strategy is that what we've done is after you've you know secured a meeting with a major donor, give them a page that you've created that might be more private, that's not for the general population, that's more about you. And it might be four or three things that really preps them for the conversation. The top could be an, uh, a video of the executive director talking about what the organization does. It could be latest information, those big, bold headlines. And what you could do in an email is say, you know, I'm looking forward to our time together. If you do have any time in advance, feel free to take a look at uh, this. Feel free to take a look at this uh, page. There's some information about us. I'll go into more detail. But again, if you have any time. So it's a great way to help them learn already. And I'll say if you do that, make sure you keep it quick, succinct. Remember those statements at the beginning of the of the conversation. That will be really, really important that we've had today. All right. So let's go to another concept is helping donors share their story. Remember, fundraising is as much as it's about us. It's really about our donors helping to support, <clears throat> excuse me, the people that we help. And as, as much as you can, and you'll see here, <coughs> excuse me, the American Red Cross does a nice job on, on trying to help people share their stories of why they give and what they do, why they volunteer uh, to as well. Don't be afraid to, to ask people to share their stories. And of course, when we say, you know, try and get their stories from a very short uh, you know, a couple paragraphs about what it is that pulls them. And don't ask necessarily all the time, why do you give? It's going to be, that's going to be a good answer. But why is it that this is important? Why is the cause important? Why is it that we have to help people? Ask them questions about the people and you'll get to some of that answer too as well. That's what we have always found. But share donor stories. You know, it, uh, I mentioned earlier that, you know, on that page of transaction, Yes, that is a page that needs to focus on the individuals you help, but you can share throughout other pages about people that are supporting you. And But really what you're doing, if you use the language of why is this issue important, why is the cause important, you're going to be getting some really great sound bites from donors about what it is that's important in the issue in the community rather than just, well, this is why I give, which is hard to relate for somebody uh, who just reads that too as well. So Get and share donor stories as much as possible. What I would recommend is that as, as somebody, after they give to your organization, they usually get a follow-up standard email. By the way, make sure you change that thing up. It's so boring. And all, you know, from Sage to Blackwell, they just have standard forms that they, they make, that they have already pre-populated. So make sure you get some, some really good pieces there. And in that follow-up email, what you could do is say, thanks for being a donor. Here's three pages of our website that I want to tell you about. The first one is, here's where you can get some updates, some videos of our executive director. Second thing that you can do, we've got two or three upcoming events. Love to have you there if you can make it. Third thing is, we want to hear from you about why this issue is important. From time to time, we highlight the issues and we talk about those things and have them go to a site where similar like this where they can do this. And, and get that information. And by the way, you don't need a lot of technology to do that. They could even share that in Facebook, your Facebook environment too as well. All right, so now it's 1245. And so you may have bored you throughout the whole conversation or you might still be stuck with me saying the word special a hundred times. But if not, uh, I'm glad we're here towards the end because I'm gonna finish up in a little bit. And so if you have any questions, make sure and put those in right now and we'll get to those. Again, we'll get you out before the hour uh, too as well. So just to make sure that I leave you with some checklists to think about. Remember, we started with what is fundraising, online fundraising supposed to be about, and then we're going to leave with some, some checklist things for you to consider. First and foremost, is the action easy to find? You have to guide people, right? We need cues. I got to help. You got to help me. Click here right now to make this happen. We need you to do this right now. And you can do that by clicking on the donate button. You know, clearly tie it into that campaign too as well. Is it compelling? Remember that big, bold statement. This is, you know, sometimes our lofty mission statements and our vision statements are really great. That's not necessarily the compelling reason for somebody to act impulsively in that moment. Remember, we talked about that the website environment is an impulsive environment. It's a quick. And behind this 
behind this screen or there's a billion, million, whatever how many web pages there are. So we've got to be quick in that standpoint. Do your donors know how their gift is used? We talked about that too, that we need to help them say, this is where we're going to go with that. This is where, this is what the result is of that gift. Are you giving options clear? How many clicks does it take to get to the end of the donation form? Whew, it's exhausting just even thinking about it. So you're going to need to make sure that you get the right amount there. And is there a really great quality confirmation email that we just talked about? It gets people from saying, yes, I gave, but now it's another opportunity to help understand what the next step is. As you can see from there, again, progressive in the bullets as you go down, this is from start to finish, what you should be thinking about with your donation pages too, uh, as well. All right, so I see some questions coming in now that we're getting to that time together. And I know that some of you may need to depart, so thank you. But uh, we got a couple questions here. One of the first questions is, Derek, you mentioned a lot about using images on the websites. We don't have the resources to hire a video a photographer. Any thoughts from your perspective? Well, you know, the 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 uh, I remember buying my uh, Canon point and shoot, this little camera, uh, probably three years ago, and my wife and I had I think saved up our credit card points to do that. And 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 now I look at that thing as it sits in my um, as it sits in my desk and it doesn't do anything because my iPhone is actually much better. And I would say that you know now that everybody has the tools from smartphones to anything else is that we're all photographers. And some of the best images I have seen are the ones that are not taken by photographers because it is in the moment. And don't be afraid to show those things or share those on Facebook or do that. And so, I, yes, if you do need to use a photographer and you have the resources, that's great. I'm not advocating not to. I just be realistic because the people that you're trying to connect with in a humanistic environment um, will want to see those images. Now, here's a couple hints that I'll give you about images where even if it's not the best photo, you can kind of trick it a little bit. So here's some secrets that we do. Um, we will sometimes ask our clients to give us some of their photos. And from time to time, the photos just don't, they just don't look that great. Well, if you open up the photo and any, you can put what's called a filter or a transparency, like a color or, you know, text over it. Once you do that, as long as the, the donor has the conceptual of what it is behind there, that um, and you can see it through the transparency of the filter, of the coloring that you put on there, you've accomplished what you need to do, even if it's a lesser quality photo. So there's a couple tricks that we'll use from time to time. Every time we put text over it, we try to um, you know hide some of the imperfections if there are any, uh, or even do those filters. And the, the best thing about that is any micro, you know, very common Microsoft. Uh, pieces now. You can even do that on Instagram if you were to use that uh, too as well. Or, you know, even if you could use it for your organization, if you have like an Adobe um, creative suite uh, too as well. The And I would say the same thing for video. The most Some of the best videos I've seen have had very little editing done to them where they have a camera in front of a beneficiary, in front of an executive or a program person who speaks all of the time about the issue uh, just talking eloquently um, and uh, about what's happening right now uh, with the organization and, and the cause and the issue. All right, this the next question that we have. Uh, this is a <laughs> this is a good one. So the 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 question is around board. Um, we uh, we have some board members that want us to redesign our website, but do not give us any money to do so. <laughs> Any thoughts on how I can convince them besides showing them your PowerPoint? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, that would probably be uh, a good way. I, <laughs> it's a, it's a challenge too. And you know, what's even more of a challenge. And I've been in your shoes where you've been in board meetings and they're like, you know, I just don't like our, they'll say, we need a new website. And I'll say, all right, you know, what it is, what don't you like about the website? And we might all have that same feeling. But what's, what's hard about website and technology is that it is individualistic from time to time. Uh, it is the sense of that some people like certain looks and feels than they would like, you know, certain way things are positioned. And so as much as you can, I always try to bring it back to them and say, so because you haven't given me a big budget, because a big budget would mean that we could transform the site completely. So because you have it, you've only given me a small budget, we might be able to hire a design intern or work with somebody, um, our past, whoever created our website, 
you have to give me the two or three things that you think need to change uh, regardless, knowing that we can't change the whole thing. And when I, and then I'll even say, all right, so of those two or three things, you have to help me understand, is it the way it looks? Is it the language that's on that page? Is it not clear what you're supposed to do? And in fact, you know what? I'm going to put up the website right now, and I want you to point to the things that you dislike on that. And it's a very good exercise because what they will, what usually happens is they come out and say, you know, I just don't like the whole thing, which is fine. And then that's what you can say. <laughs> Great. So if you don't like the whole thing and, you know, some of the things that you do have suggestions for, we really can't help. We're, I would love if you could help advocate for more resources that we could do these. Now, let's sort of, you know, even if that one doesn't work, what I've also found too is that there's some really creative young millennials that can do some design features uh, and that can do some things for you that you would never even realize. Um, you know, I, uh, I had to figure out how to code only because that's also what people do here uh, in my shop. But what is also interesting in that is that a lot of the designers know how to code and they can do certain things to a certain extent because that's what they're teaching. And that might just be an option for you too as well. And, and hiring somebody to do that. And one of the, the best people to hire is I always think of design or somebody that has design experience because those are the things that will keep you consistently refreshed on both of your copy and how your websites look. All right, so the next question uh, that we have comes around social media. Would you share the same images that you have on your website within social media uh, or not? And it seems that we don't have enough pictures and images to share on our website all of the time. Any suggestions? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is just making it a priority, right? So it's within your organization and saying on a weekly meeting, hey, we would love to get two to three images like this. And a lot of the organizations and clients that we have, that we talk with will actually create a document that says this week we want to produce these things that we'll have on our website. And they break it down and it says, we want to produce a blog post. We want to have these tweets go out. We want to somehow get these images from the field. We want to have this. And so if you can talk through what those images might be and making sure that somebody does it, because I will tell you from time to time, I have left events, organize, people have left organize, uh, activities and said, oh my gosh, I wish we would have taken a photo. And so if you can talk about what the activities and the programs that will happen that week, you'll tend to have some of that. You tend to be more disciplined in trying to make that happen. All right, so I have five till the hour. As I mentioned, we would like to end a little early for you to head out to your next meeting. Thanks so much for the time. Sorry about the audio. We'll make sure and get you the recording of this. Hopefully you didn't record me saying uh, special so many times, but uh, we'll also give you the PowerPoint uh, if you need that too. Well, thanks so much. Enjoy your spring. Hopefully you're not cold wherever you are. Uh, I know some people are having inclement weather, but thank you. Enjoy the spring. We'll talk again soon towards the end of the month at our next webinar as well. Take care. Bye-bye.